Level zero. The ground is warm here, unnaturally warm. Steam curls up from cracks in the earth, and the air smells faintly of sulfur, like someone struck a match and forgot to blow it out. A shallow pool of water sits perfectly still, its surface mirror smooth, reflecting the sky above. Then, without warning, it hiccups. One bubble, a gentle plume of steam. Silence again. This is a geyser at its most docile state, what geologists call a perpetual spouter or a boiling spring. The water temperature hovers around 200 degrees Fahrenheit, just below boiling at this elevation, heated by magma chambers miles beneath the surface. These features are technically geysers. They have all the plumbing, but they lack the pressure or the precise conditions needed for dramatic eruptions. The mechanism is deceptively simple. Groundwater seeps down through cracks in the rock, gets heated by the geothermal system below, and rises back up. But unlike a regular hot spring that flows continuously, a geyser has a constriction somewhere in its plumbing system. In these perpetual spouters, that valve is either too wide or the heat source isn't quite strong enough. So instead of building up explosive pressure, the water just gurgles and steams continuously. Places like these exist all over Yellowstone, Iceland, and New Zealand's geothermal zones. Tourists walk past them without a second glance, hunting for the big shows, the famous geysers that explode on schedule. These quiet pools bubble contentedly at the edges of boardwalks, their steam rising lazily into the cold mountain air, largely ignored by visitors with cameras pointed elsewhere. The thermal energy beneath them is immense, constantly radiating heat through the Earth's crust, creating these mesmerizing displays of nature's power in its gentlest form. Scientists study these features carefully, measuring temperatures and analyzing water chemistry. Each perpetual spouter tells a story about the geothermal system beneath it, revealing information about heat flow and water circulation patterns through the underground network of fractures in the bedrock. Because when you add just a little more heat, a little more pressure, a slightly tighter constriction in the plumbing, these docile springs stop whispering, and what comes next isn't gentle at all. Level 1. Now the rhythm changes. Instead of constant simmering, the pool goes through cycles. It fills, it heats, it erupts, it rests. These are the small, frequent geysers erupting every few minutes to every few hours, shooting water maybe 3 to 10 feet into the air. Geysers like Anemone Geyser in Yellowstone exemplify this level. Every 7 to 10 minutes it fills with water, the surface begins to dome upward as pressure builds below, and then it erupts in a brief, violent burst, draining the pool completely before starting the cycle again. Here's how it works. Water fills the underground chambers and passages, heated from below by volcanic rock that can reach temperatures exceeding 400 degrees Fahrenheit. As the water heats, it wants to boil, but the weight of the water column above it increases the boiling point through pressure. The water at the bottom gets superheated, hotter than boiling temperature at surface pressure, but it can't boil yet. Eventually, when water near the surface finally does start to boil and overflow, it reduces the pressure on the superheated water below. Suddenly, that water can boil too, and it does so explosively, flashing instantly into steam that expands with tremendous force. These small geysers are nature's metronomes, reliable and rhythmic. Some are predictable to the minute, others more temperamental, influenced by groundwater levels or seismic activity. Park visitors often gather around them, watching the pools fill and drain with mechanical precision, a preview of the larger spectacles that await deeper in the thermal basins. The predictability makes them favorites among researchers and photographers alike, providing regular opportunities to witness and document the eruption process. The spray catches light beautifully, creating rainbows in the mist on sunny days, while steam glows ethereally during sunrise and sunset hours. The geology underlying these frequent eruptions is fascinating, with relatively simple plumbing systems consisting of nearly vertical conduits with one or two chambers, allowing rapid cycling between eruptions. But predictable is about to become a word that no longer applies because the same physics powering these modest 10-foot burps can launch water so high into the sky that standing anywhere near it becomes a life-threatening mistake. Level 2. The eruptions are taller now, reaching 20 to 60 feet, and they last longer, sometimes several minutes of continuous discharge. The sound changes too, from a gentle burbling to a roar, like opening a fire hydrant at full blast. Grand Geyser in Yellowstone operates at this level. It erupts roughly every 7 to 15 hours, when it does go off, it sends fountain-like bursts of water up to 200 feet high, the eruption pulsing and surging for 9 to 12 minutes. At this level, the underground plumbing system becomes more complex. These geysers often have multiple chambers and passages, creating a network that fills with water and builds pressure over hours or even days. 
The constrictions become tighter and more strategic, creating the perfect bottleneck for pressure to accumulate to explosive levels. Temperature measurements show water reaching 250 degrees Fahrenheit, or more at depth. The pressure from the water column above keeps it liquid until the eruption begins. Then the rapid pressure drop causes that superheated water to flash violently into steam, increasing in volume by a factor of 1,600 almost instantaneously. A major fountain geyser can discharge thousands of gallons per eruption. These geysers shape the landscape around them, building up terraces and cones of geyserite, a form of opal, one eruption at a time. The beauty of fountain geysers is unmatched, bursting from pools in spectacular displays where water erupts in multiple directions simultaneously, creating effects like enormous liquid firework. The areas surrounding major fountains are geological wonderlands, with silica-rich water depositing minerals during each eruption slowly building ornate formations over centuries. The terraces can be intricate and delicate, with scalloped edges and rippled surfaces recording the history of countless eruptions over time. But there's a reason park rangers install barriers around certain geysers and not others. Because some geysers don't erupt on convenient schedules, and when they finally do decide to blow, the word fountain doesn't even begin to describe what happens. Level 3. Now we're talking about geysers that don't just erupt, they detonate. Water columns reaching 100 to 200 feet, eruptions lasting up to half an hour, discharge rates measured in hundreds of gallons per second. The ground shakes, the roar is deafening. Old Faithful, perhaps the most famous geyser on Earth, sits at the lower end of this level. It erupts roughly every 90 minutes, shooting water between 106 and 185 feet high. Each eruption ejects between 3,700 and 8,400 gallons of boiling water. The plumbing systems of giant geysers are engineering marvels of natural hydraulics. Boreholes drilled near geyser vents have revealed conduits, extending hundreds of feet deep, sometimes branching into multiple chambers. These systems are self-sealing. The silica-rich water deposits minerals that gradually close cracks and maintain pressure integrity. The power involved is immense. A geyser erupting at 150 feet is accelerating thousands of gallons of water from rest to over 60 miles per hour in seconds. The energy comes from heat stored in the rock and water below, released in a sudden thermodynamic cascade. Old Faithful has become an icon not just of Yellowstone, but of geological phenomena worldwide. More people have witnessed its eruptions than any other geyser on Earth. The visitor center provides predicted eruption times, and crowds gather on benches, cameras ready, waiting for the performance. The eruption begins with teasing bursts that build anticipation, then the main column rockets skyward, sustained by incredible pressure release happening deep underground. Yet even Old Faithful erupts like clockwork. But what about the geysers that don't follow schedules? The ones that sleep for years, building pressure in the darkness, waiting for the perfect moment to unleash devastation? Level 4. These are the geysers that erupt in years, not hours. When they finally blow, scientists scramble to document it. These are geysers where intervals between eruptions are measured in months, years, or even decades. Steamboat Geyser in Yellowstone is the current world record holder for height, capable of launching water and steam over 300 feet into the air. But Steamboat is maddeningly unpredictable. Between 1911 and 1961, it didn't erupt once. When steamboat erupts, it detonates. The initial blast can be heard for miles. The water phase lasts 3 to 40 minutes, followed by a powerful steam phase that can continue for hours or even days, blasting superheated vapor with a roar like jet engines. What makes these titans so unpredictable? Their complex plumbing systems and the delicate balance of factors that must align. Small earthquakes can alter the system. Seasonal groundwater fluctuations change the recharge rate. Predicting when a titan will erupt is nearly impossible. Geysir in Iceland, the geyser that gave all geysers their name, once erupted to heights of 230 feet. For centuries it was spectacular, then in the early 1900s, it stopped almost entirely, entering a dormancy that lasted decades. The unpredictability makes them both frustrating and fascinating for researchers. Steamboat's recent active phase beginning in 2018 has provided unprecedented opportunities to study a major geyser in full eruption mode. Scientists rush to the site whenever an eruption begins, deploying instruments, taking samples, and documenting everything before the eruption ends. Witnessing a Titan geyser eruption is a once-in-a-lifetime experience, with the sheer scale difficult to comprehend until you're standing there feeling the ground vibrate and watching a column of boiling water taller than a 30-story building blast into the sky. But here's where things get truly unsettling. Every geyser we've discussed operates within normal parameters, but there are geysers that erupt once and destroy themselves in the process. And beyond those, there's a level that isn't really a geyser anymore. Level 5. 
Sometimes a geyser doesn't just erupt, it explodes, and the difference is measured in shattered rock, craters hundreds of feet wide, and shockwaves that register on seismometers. Hydrothermal explosions occur when the pressurized plumbing system fails catastrophically. Instead of water rising through a vent, the entire system ruptures at once. Superheated water instantly flashes to steam, expanding with explosive force. In July 2024, a hydrothermal explosion occurred in Yellowstone's Biscuit Basin, ejecting rocks and debris over 100 feet. In 1989, Porkchop Geyser erupted with such violence that it tore itself apart, destroying its own plumbing system. The largest hydrothermal explosion crater in Yellowstone is Mary Bay, nearly a mile wide. About 13,000 years ago, the system beneath that area exploded with force equivalent to hundreds of tons of TNT. These explosions happen because geothermal systems are inherently unstable. They exist in delicate equilibrium between heat, pressure, and structural integrity. We can't predict them. Unlike volcanic eruptions, hydrothermal explosions can happen with little to no warning. The violence is difficult to overstate. These are not gentle releases, but catastrophic failures where the entire containment system disintegrates in seconds. The explosions hurl multi-ton boulders hundreds of feet through the air, excavate craters in solid rock, and spread debris fields for miles. What makes them particularly dangerous is their sudden onset, with systems appearing stable until they explode without warning. But even these violent explosions are small compared to what happens when a geyser field sits atop something far more dangerous. When the heat source isn't just magma a few miles down, but an entire volcanic system preparing to wake up. Level 6. There's a reason scientists monitor Yellowstone's geysers obsessively, measuring temperatures, tracking eruption intervals, analyzing water chemistry. Because geysers aren't just tourist attractions, they're diagnostic tools, windows into the vast magmatic system churning beneath. When geysers start behaving strangely, when new thermal features appear or old ones die, when water chemistry changes, these are potential warning signs that something deeper is changing. In the months before the 1959 Hebgen Lake earthquake, a 7.3 magnitude event just outside Yellowstone, several geysers began erupting with unusual frequency. After the earthquake, the entire hydrothermal system went haywire. Some geysers stopped entirely, others that had been dormant for decades suddenly roared back to life. In New Zealand's Waimong Valley, the world's largest geyser existed for only four years. The Waimong geyser began erupting in 1900, following a massive volcanic eruption. At its peak, Waimong launched water and rock over 1,500 feet into the air. Then, in 1904, a landslide changed the water level, and Waimong stopped forever. Scientists now understand that large-scale changes in geyser behavior can indicate magma movement, pressure changes, or structural deformation in volcanic systems. In Iceland, increased thermal activity in geyser fields has preceded volcanic eruptions. The geysers become nervous, erratic, their eruptions speeding up or slowing down as the earth beneath them shifts and groans. The connection between geyser behavior and deeper volcanic activity is increasingly well understood. Geysers are essentially pressure relief valves for geothermal systems, and their behavior reflects conditions deep underground. Modern Yellowstone is instrumented with an extensive network of sensors including seismometers, GPS stations, temperature probes, and gas sensors, all feeding data into sophisticated computer models that characterize the volcanic system's state. Which brings us to a disturbing question. What happens when a geyser isn't releasing pressure anymore but building towards something catastrophic? What happens when the entire system stops acting like individual geysers and starts acting like a single, massive pressure cooker with a failing seal? Level 7. When water meets magma, the result isn't fire or lava, it's an explosion that turns water into a weapon. A phreatic eruption occurs when water comes into contact with magma or extremely hot rock. The water instantly vaporizes, expanding in volume by more than a thousand times in a fraction of a second. That expansion has nowhere to go but up, taking everything with it – rock, ash, mud, and superheated steam. In 2014, Mount Ontek in Japan experienced a phreatic eruption that killed 63 people, most of them hikers near the summit. There was almost no warning. Then it exploded. A column of ash and rock shot 30,000 feet into the air. The eruption was caused by the hydrothermal system beneath the volcano suddenly failing. Water circulating through hot rock encountered fresh magma, or the cap rock containing the pressurized system cracked. Yellowstone's geothermal system exists in a constant state of potential phreatic eruption. The magma chamber is only a few miles down in places. If that magma rose closer to the surface, the resulting eruptions could be devastating. In 2019, White Island in New Zealand erupted, killing 22 tourists. 
The eruption was phreatic, driven by steam and hydrothermal fluids, not new magma, but deadly nonetheless. The terrifying aspect is their unpredictability. Unlike magmatic eruptions with warning signs, phreatic eruptions can occur with minimal precursors. The system might look stable until the moment it explodes. Mount Ontek shocked Japan and the volcanology community. The mountain was considered relatively safe, a popular hiking destination with no recent dangerous eruptions. Survivors described the eruption as sudden and overwhelming, with the sky darkening in seconds, rocks raining down, and the air becoming unbreathable. White Island provided another tragic lesson, erupting in the middle of a tour with people exploring the crater having no chance to escape. Yet even a major phreatic eruption pales in comparison to the next level. Because there's one scenario where a geyser field becomes ground zero for a volcanic event that reshapes continents. Level 8. Yellowstone's geysers exist because the park sits atop a supervolcano, a magma chamber so vast that if it erupted, the consequences would be global. A supervolcano is capable of producing an eruption, measuring 8 on the volcanic explosivity index. Mount St. Helens in 1980 was a 5. Krakatoa in 1883 was a 6. A VEI-8 eruption ejects over 1,000 cubic kilometers of material, enough to bury entire states. The eruption column reaches the stratosphere, blocking sunlight and plunging temperatures worldwide. Yellowstone has done this three times in the past 2 million years. The most recent eruption, 640,000 years ago, ejected 1,000 cubic kilometers of rock and ash, fundamentally altering the North American landscape in ways still visible today. Before a supervolcanic eruption, the geothermal system would go haywire. Geysers would change behavior dramatically. New thermal features would appear, old ones would explode. The ground would swell as the magma chamber inflated. In the final hours, the geysers might erupt continuously, desperately venting pressure. Then the ground would split open across miles, massive fissures venting gas and ash, and a column of material would rise into the stratosphere. The scale defies comprehension. The eruption doesn't just affect the local area, it impacts the entire planet. Ash falls across continents. The climate cools for years. Ecosystems collapse. The Yellowstone caldera is the scar left by the last eruption, when the ground collapsed after the magma chamber emptied. The erupted material spread across the western United States in deposits meters thick, with ash circling the globe in the stratosphere. Scientists point out that a supervolcanic eruption at Yellowstone isn't imminent. The magma chamber is monitored constantly, but the system is still active. The heat is still there. The magma is still molten. From the gentle hiccup of a perpetual spouter to volcanic events that could reshape continents, geysers represent a spectrum of Earth's geothermal power. We've built parks around them, set our watches by them, all while standing on top of some of the most dangerous geological features on the planet. The universe made one of its most destructive forces beautiful enough that we willingly gathered around it, cameras in hand, waiting for the show. And the show will always go on. The only question is which level we'll witness next.